Hi, I'm Jonathan M0 JSX. I've got a box from Retivis. Let's have a look what's inside. Okay, I do have some idea of what's in here, although I'll be honest with you, it's a bigger box than I was expecting, and I think I know the reason. Uh, this is, uh, as you can probably see on here, it's a Retivis RT95. Now, this goes by many different names on the internet. It also goes by the Anytone. Uh, 8778 uh, and I think it's also there's also one other name it goes by although the name of that is it a Citron Micro I think it might be something like that not to be confused with a Nissan Micro obviously which is a car all right let's open up the uh, box so I'll be honest with you uh, Retifis reached out to me and said hey um you know we'd like to I wanted to start working with you. What do you want to have a look at? And they gave me a choice of a few different items. And this is the one I picked because the other two were handhelds. And let's be honest, here on the channel, we've had a look at a number of handhelds recently. Um, but I was only expecting there to be um, just the radio. So this is uh, the radio itself. Got a, uh, a model on it. I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, so RT95, 25 watts, and I'm not sure what... A9129B means, just means it's not the A929A, obviously, but I'm not sure what that means. We'll get to that in a second. I also asked for a programming cable, so they have included a programming cable for me as well. Uh, uh, it's got a big box out of the way, and then damage on the box here, which turns it, but I'm sure it'll be fine inside. In here is. All right, so it's a, a little uh, mag mount. Let's put it out of the packaging. Again, the uh, thread has burst through the uh, packaging, never mind. Yeah, that feels quite nice, nice and weighty. Nice felt bottom. I'm going to scratch up the car when I put it on the car. Uh, terminated in PL259. Interesting, they've just gone for a thread hin rather than... Um, any particular connector that we might be able to put different whips on. Uh, so with this, it is the supplied whip or nothing. Oh, but we can put the. Uh, I mean, that feels quite sturdy to be honest with you. Nice rubber tip on the end. We'll see some kind of inductor. Uh, what's that? Quarter of the way up? Third of the, no, it must be about a quarter of the way up the antenna. But we can't uh, easily tell the distance. But yeah, probably about a quarter of the way up must be doing some matching on 77s uh nice okay so that's that's nice that's what i didn't know <laughs> i was getting i didn't know i was getting the version with uh, the antenna but actually that's quite nice because it's newark in a few days time uh, the ham fest up there and i'm going to run this in the car on the way up at least that's my plan uh programming cable uh it's a rj45 so i'm assuming that goes into the mic connector through to a standard USB-A. That's fine, I think we can program this with Chirp. Uh, let's get into the meat and bones of the radio itself. I have to say, the radio box feels nice and sturdy. Uh, instruction manual, whoa, that's a chunky manual. <laughs> okay, uh, how much of that is in English? Uh, there we go, so that's the that in English, that is German. Yeah, okay. We'll come back to that if we need it. Let's lift up this section. Here is the radio itself. Now, I've previously seen this radio but badged with, with an Anytone badge. Um, never actually used one, to be honest with you. It's nice weight. Uh, it's all heat, heat sink at the back here, so uh, no fan that I can see, which is fine. Uh, let's have a quick look around uh, the radio on the front obviously on off button there's six of these programmable buttons uh, vfo channel knob and the function button uh, speaker on the bottom curious place for a speaker to be but i suppose if you're mounting this underneath your dash maybe then speaker firing out the bottom is a good option and then on the rear so239 for the antenna an external speaker a socket and then also a, a T connector for power, um, which is fine. Kenwood's use that T connector. Most of the other manufacturers now have gone on to using sort of the two pin um, flat connectors, but nothing wrong with that. Uh, and then underneath here, 
uh, a little mounting bracket and there's also some mounting hardware which is quite nice uh, a nice long power cable at least it looks very long again t connector there was they all have some power poles put on post haste and uh, the microphone and uh, let's have a feel of the microphone because i'm quite fussy when it comes to microphones i have to say it it feels rather nice it's got a nice positive click uh, a nice nice amount of resistance i think my only my only possible comment is that it could be a bit weightier i mean it's not a bad weight to be honest but i don't know maybe i'm curious i want to open this up and have a look to see if they've put a weight in here if you open up a yasu microphone something like the mh48 um, or the mh36 mics um they have on this on the back of the microphone they have sort of a, a weight installed to give the to give it a bit more weight in hand i'm curious as to whether there i can't quite decide whether there is one in there or not not sure i might open it up and find out um and then on the other end it is an rj45 connector which obviously plugs in to the front of the radio like that uh, next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get this powered up and uh, and then we'll have a play with it so a few days have passed and we've got the radio connected onto a 12 volt power supply it's actually one of the server power supplies that i've previously done a video on here on the channel there's a link somewhere in the top right hand side of the screen uh, i've also programmed the radio using the programming cable and chirp software very easy process to follow there uh, so you can see we're listening to uh, GB3RD, or at least would be if we had an antenna connected. Uh, and I've also mounted the radio using the supplied bracket onto a, a wooden chopping board, uh, which I happened to find at a discount supermarket. It was one of those trips where I went in for a bottle of milk and came out with a bottle of milk, four wooden chopping boards and a drill. You know, just how that happens. Anyway, let's have a look around the radio with it powered on. You can see that everything here is backlit, which is really nice. So even if you're operating this in the car, you're going to be able to see everything nice and easily. You've got these six uh, programmable buttons, which uh, I mentioned when we didn't have the radio on. But with it screen on, you can see what they relate to. So you can see that at the moment, uh, P1 is programmed to swap the uh, main and sub VFOs. Uh, P2 is to go in and out of... Uh, the VFO or memory mode and so on and so forth and there are two banks to these so if we quick press the function button we can see that we go into the sort of sub options uh, where we can set up shift or scan or set the power uh, or the CTSF or the band uh, or there is this one which is quite nice which is direction uh, which will flip the uh, screen on its head I was trying to think when would that be useful because the radio itself can be mounted either way up so you can either mount it as i currently see it here with um with sort of the base to the bottom or the bracket down the bottom or you can have the bracket coming over the top so you can hang it so i'm not quite sure when you might find flipping the screen around to be useful i i, I mean maybe if you're operating it in the car and it's down the side between sort of the, the your leg and the center console and your passenger wants to see I, I don't know i can't see that that's a particularly useful thing but maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm missing the point uh, and that's that's fine and the actual menu structure itself is pretty reminiscent i have to say of things like the tyt uh md380 that kind of feels very similar but um, I, everything is is clear if you press and hold that function button uh, we can go into the function menu and uh, the first thing i did was turn the beep off as that was very loud uh, you've got a, a mic gain setting you can change the step size you know it's everything that you would expect to see uh, in a in a mobile analog radio uh, i've chosen to have the speaker on in both the main unit and the one in the microphone which actually is quite a nice setup um but uh, it's yeah everything there that you would expect to see. You've also got a channel menu. So if you wanted to set up uh, CTCSS or, or anything like that, you can do that from within here as well. Uh, you've got the mini key so you can set what these options are. I haven't bothered to do that. And you've also can set up what the uh, buttons on the uh, microphone do as well. So uh, you can change 
change what the options there are. Again, that stuff you can also do within uh, the software as well. So if you didn't want to do it necessarily on the radio, which can be a bit of a pain, uh, you can do it using the programming, using Chirp and the programming cable. It does work very nicely. Slight annoyances that I've found, uh, the volume is a bit of a pain. Um, whereas you've got to press this volume, you've got to press the volume button and then the channel, um, which I'm not so keen on, to be honest with you. I wish you could set these up and down buttons on the microphone to permanently be volume. That's just me because ordinarily this is, is setting the channels uh, or changing your, your VFO if you're in if you're in VFO mode. It's, it's going to... Oh, that's another thing. If you press a button and then do that, it does the... Yes. <laughs> Live demonstration of one of the things that I don't like about this radio is that it, it remembers and then that switch does whatever the function you've just asked to change. I wish it didn't do that. Um, but yeah, I wish that the, I wish there was another way of doing volume. It's a small annoyance. And let's be honest, it's one you could easily get over. Um, Next question, of course, is how does it sound? Uh, well, I'm going to insert a clip into receiving some audio and also transmitting audio as well. Julia, Victor, thoughts returning. Absolutely no problems, uh, Jonathan. Absolutely clear audio. Uh, solid signal at the end stop. I'm running a, I think it's an A-tone. I always forget. It's a few and far times that I don't play with them. I think the 575, the dual band and digital uh, Anytone. Uh, so hopefully that's a, uh, it's a, a bit of a thumpy diesel engine this thing, so it's booming around like a, you know, in the metal box, so uh, that's good that it's not picking that up, so. Uh, this is Mike Zero, Juliet Sierra X-Ray, uh, M0JSX, uh, testing the transmitted audio from the Retifice RT95. M0JSX testing. Now let's talk about the supplied antenna, which I've now been able to test and use both on a road trip up to uh, Newark uh, and also uh, locally around town. And I have to say, it works surprisingly well. Now, obviously, it's not going to outperform something longer, you know, that might be on either a dedicated mount or a larger mag base. But I have to say, for the length, it's great. The magnet is very strong. I like the felt on the bottom that's not going to scratch up your car. Generally, it works really nicely. Now, on the way back from Newark, I was listening to a repeater, which I think was the Nottingham repeater, or certainly a repeater in the Nottingham area. And according to the repeater book app, that repeater was about 30 or so miles away from where I was at the time. Now, I'm not sure of the topography between where I was and where the repeater is, uh, so I don't know whether actually the path was quite good. But even so, that was a pretty good distance and certainly much further than you'd expect from a rubber duck on a handheld, for instance. So very impressed with the antenna. I think it's got more applications than just going with uh, the RT95. Let's talk about the RT95 itself though now because I've enjoyed using this radio. I really have. I think that it's, uh, for the size, it's really impressive. 25 watts without a fan uh, is impressive, but it knows there's a reason that there is this yellow warning on the top that says caution hot surface uh, because it does get hot. Uh, one evening in the last couple of weeks, I was having a chat with a, a local ham uh, who we often have a chat uh, once or a week or so. He often goes out portable up on one of the local hills. Uh, and we're having a chat on two metres. And I thought, oh, I'll use the Retivist tonight to, to give it a bit of a test. And was happy that I got some nice audio reports. Uh, but by the time that I finished talking with, uh, with Tim, the radio was almost to the point where I couldn't put my hand on it for more than about a few seconds. So it does get warm. Um, whether it's an oversight not to include a fan, I don't know, but it's just something you've got to bear in mind. If you're putting this in your car, um, you need to put it somewhere where there is air around. You don't want to be putting it sort of tucked away in the dashboard, which looks quite attractive because it looks kind of din-sized probably not the best thing to do with this radio 
just because of the heat sink and how hot it gets. Uh, but overall, for me, it is the perfect mobile radio because I don't have a car that I have a radio in permanently. So now if I'm borrowing a car or if I'm using my wife's car, uh, this is the perfect radio because I can take it on my chopping board, plonk it on the dashboard, plug it into uh, to 12 volts, either by plugging into the cigarette lighter uh, or by taking a battery with me and uh, one of the sort of small LifePo batteries more than enough to drive this for a few hours uh, with the uh, with the supplied mag mount on, as well uh, and I've got a perfect little mobile setup and that was the setup I used uh, for Newark and I have to say I was really dead impressed with it. Uh, also dead impressed with how easy it was to program using Chirp. I mean we know that Chirp is has come a long way and the fact that you can ask Chirp to, to get a list of repeaters for you which is a really handy feature um, and programming the Retivis was, was just a doddle as it is with most of these Chinese radios now if, if you've programmed anything like a I don't even know a Baofeng in the last few years you know how easy Chirp is to use so with the Retivis RT95 it is absolutely no different there are some affiliate links down below which will take you to Amazon where you can buy this radio directly from Retifis. Uh, the radio it, on its own with obviously the microphone and the DC power cable, everything in the radio box, uh, will cost you £119.99. Alternatively, if you want the full package with the radio and the antenna, that will cost you £135.99. Although, do keep your eyes peeled because, as you can look at my screen right now, it's offering me a £20 voucher. I don't quite know what that means, but hey, if it takes 20 quid off the price, that sounds like a bargain to me. Uh, thanks very much to Retivis for sending me the radio and the antenna for review. I really have enjoyed using them, and I will continue to use them, to be honest with you, anytime I go uh, mobile, it's going to be the radio that I grab to put in the car uh, because, as I say, for me, it's absolutely perfect. Thanks very much uh, for watching. If you've liked this video, there's a button specifically for that. Uh, if you haven't, there's another button that seems to work just fine too. And if you haven't already done so, please do click on that subscribe button uh, and press that notification bell as well. And you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. There's another video coming up over here that the algorithm thinks that you might like next. Until next time, 73. Bye-bye.